What is Radeon Chill? Part 1. It's the setting you have per game in the Radeon settings that allows you to tell the game to lower frame rates in response to less movement on screen. In other words, if you're, if I'm playing Battlefield 5 and I'm running really fast and there's like a jet flying, well, an airplane flying by and then like a machine gun firing in front of me, it'll be running 144 hertz. The second I stop moving and there's not a lot of people moving in front of me, it might start lowering just a little bit. It usually goes down to like 120 hertz. And then if I stand completely still, it lowers to 100 hertz because that's what I put as the minimum frame rate. And what it is doing is doing a... Let's see, how would I say this? It's buffering the next frame over and over, and it still feels pretty smooth. And so there's actually no input lag when you move quickly. When it boosts the frame rate again, when fast movement happens, it's been buffering the frame. So it actually does a slight latency bonus once it boosts up in frame rate. And it can cut down energy by as much as 20, 30, 40%, depending on what you said. I see a lot of people who game at 144 hertz, let it just go all the way down to like 90 hertz. I stop it at 100. Just to, because they can't tell the difference, you know? It's only going at 144 hertz when there's a lot of movement on screen. And the reason I want to talk about this is, number one, AMD's marketing department needs to just start hammering home this setting and make it more global and apply to every single game. Because, man, does it work well. And it, and... And, and really the point is, NVIDIA can brag about their greater efficiency all they want, but the fact is, let's take two equivalent GPUs, right? And I don't know if I'll include Turing, because frankly, AMD hasn't responded to Turing with anything new. So it'd be more fair to compare Pascal to Polaris or something. RX 580 to 1060. The 580 uses like 20, per, you know, unless it's a overclocked model, uses about 20% more energy for about the same performance. Let's just call it that. It, it might be a little different, right? But the point is, if you're using Radeon Show with that 580, it's actually probably using 10, 20% less energy than the 1060. And that's not a thing NVIDIA offers. We're not talking about undervolting. That's something else entirely. You can undervolt and use Radeon Show, and you're probably using half the energy. And no one talks about this. A way NVIDIA fanboys often justify their graphics cards, which really they'll use any justification they can. They'll say, well, I'm getting the 1050 Ti over the 570 because I want greater efficiency. And it's like, well, actually, if you were using, if you actually, and they don't, they don't really care about efficiency. They're just doing confirmation bias. If they actually cared about efficiency, they would get a 570 and use Radeon Chill because it's going to use about as much as that 1050 Ti or a hair more while using 50, giving you 50% more performance. And that's something that AMD needs to talk about more and more, is if you care about energy usage, actually, Radeon Chill is better. And when you combine Radeon Chill with Navi, oh my god, I bet that sucker is going to use almost no energy. Which for me doesn't matter, right? I have 0 0.06 kilowatt hour energy, which to those who said I don't make money mining, I do. My energy is as cheap as China. It's cheap. Uh, the Midwest is beautiful, people. Um, but to those who do care, Radeon Shell should not be overlooked. And this gets me to point part two of the video, which is not only should Radeon Shell not be overlooked, not only should it be talked about more, I think AMD should look into making this integrated at an architectural level. Let's talk about Vega's, the launch Vega's um, bio switch. Always a nice feature to have if you screw around with your card so you don't brick it. But it came with two BIOSes, and this is kind of what AMD's been doing with almost all of their cards lately, is it comes with BIOS 1 and 2, and there's a cool BIOS, and then on the 290X it was called an Uber BIOS, but now it's called a, you know, like a turbo BIOS on Vega. But it did nothing, really. It added a 20-watt TDP limit uplift and let it, the fans get a little louder. A little louder. That's it. That's all turbo mode did. Really, AMD should just kind of make an in-between mode, in-between turbo, probably allow the fans to go higher, but not the TDP. You know, to keep, like, that's really, it should just be in between. What they should do with the power saving BIOS though, and this is the advice, integrate Radeon Chill at an architectural level on the power saving BIOS. Make it so no one has to open up Radeon 7s. Make it so they don't need to set settings per game. Have 
a bio switch there's the turbo mode which doesn't have it on and you know it's higher fan speeds and power usage and then you switch it to power saving mode and it actually auto senses the frame rate of the monitor you're on and sets radeon chill to 30 percent lower frame rate so or 20 percent probably is what i would decide so if you're at 60 fps when there's no movement on screen it drops to 50 fps and saves 20 30 percent energy in addition to having a lower fan setting you know how like put that extra effort into having the on an architectural level just building that into the lower power bios this could yield an immensely efficient graphics card like imagine navi which as far as we can tell might actually be 20 percent more efficient than turing roughly speaking depending on the card imagine if there was also a power saving bios that lowered perf um, performance by like in a meaningful way only like five percent but lowered power usage due to only generating frames when you can tell the difference lowered power usage another 20 30 percent imagine that those cards would be quiet you'd have a 150 watt rx 3080 that in power saving mode can only use up to 140 watts but is usually using 100 less energy than a 1660 and competing with a 2070 this is something amd needs to look into not only should they be talking about radeon chill more they need to make it integrated at a base core level to really destroy nvidia and efficiency and imagine that in a laptop right these apus that only turbo to the frame rate of 60 frames and you need it to that's just my two cents just a quick thought a hot take on radeon chill it needs to be talked about more and amd cannot neglect this they really should make this a core feature just like they made FreeSync, just like they make their audio and um, color qualities and HDR qualities. I, I think that their greatest selling point could be Radeon Chill if they just put in that extra little effort. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon to discuss things with me, to make suggestions for future videos. Thank you.